Hi everyone, and in this tutorial I'd like to show you how to export passes and crypto mats from Blender 2.8 to further process them in Nuke. Just for the record, I'm using Blender 2.82 at Nuke version 11.2. Also, I'm going to use the crypto mat plugin version 124. By the way, if you want to skip to the crypto mat straight away, I'll put a timestamp into the description. All right. So um, I started off with creating four view layers. Um, here you can see beauty, crypto mats, extras, and shadow catcher. And we're gonna go slowly over them and I'm gonna explain what they will do. So first of all, here in my scene collections, I wanna create a new collection and call it exactly the same as my layers. So I'll start off with beauty. Then shadow catcher and extras. I don't need a crypto mats um, collection because we can reuse the extras later, um, just so you know. And now let's go quickly over some render settings before I do anything else. So here I'm in my render options and um, I am using cycles and I set my sampling to about 100. You could go lower, it wouldn't make a big difference. For the scene, I'm going to leave it at 100. I um, also changed my max bounces, um, so the rendering gets faster. I set them down to about six and set everything down to four. I don't need any volumes because there are no volumes in my scene. I also disabled the reflective caustics because um, we don't have any glass materials in the scene either, so we don't need those. Um, if you scroll down a bit further down here on the film, you also need to take transparent because otherwise you won't be able to see the shadow catcher properly. All right, let me quickly change to my crypto mats now. And what I want to do is disable all of my collections in here because otherwise it's, they're going to render unnecessarily. And let's go to beauty and let's first move our cube into our beauty layer. This is going to be our main object in the scene. For me, that's that cube. And what I want to do uh, at this stage as well is to du duplicate the ground plane and then move one of the ground planes into the shadow catcher and the other one into the extras collection. Um, we don't need the extras for now, so we can disable them. And we're left with our original image and the shadow catcher and beauty. So now to actually make the ground a shadow catcher, what we need to do is to go into the object tab here. Then on the visibility, we press shadow catcher. So what it's going to do is the plane is going to disappear and just leave us with um, the shadow. It's quite important to match your shadow catcher as close to the surface of your um, real footage as possible when you composite, because otherwise your shadow might look wrong. So if I now like disable the metallic, you see the shadow looks completely different than before. All right, and now um, in this layer where we are now, we want to um, quickly disable the extras layer because we don't need it. And we want to go to the shadow catcher and here in the object menu, we want to scroll down to the visibility tab and find shadow catcher. So if I tick that now, what's going to happen, as you see, is the plane disappears and leaves, leaves us only with the shadow. So that's fine. And Sure, we could export this right now, but if we want a clean separate shadow pass, we need to do a few more things. So what I'm going to do now is I will go to Shadow Catcher, View Layer, and set it to Indirect Only. What this will do is um, I disable the Shadow Catcher in my Beauty View Layer. Um, but it's still going to affect my cube. So like you can see still in the reflection here that the plane is affecting my cube, even though it's not visible. All right, let's switch back now to the shadow catcher. And yeah, as you can see, it's a bit weird how in here. So we also need to disable the extras in here. So we're back with our shadow catcher. So now what we're going to do is to get a um, clean shadow pass. We're going to do the exact same thing as we did before with the ground plane, just with the cube. So we go to our beauty collection, we go to view layer and set indirect only. So now we're left with only the shadow. And for the shadow, we only need to export um, our RGBA. Everything else is not needed. So that's all for our shadow catcher collection already.
So let's switch to extras now. In the extras, we're now going to disable the shadow catcher. So now we're back at our original image and now you can see why the duplicate ground plane comes in handy. Because let me quickly disable extras and enable the shadow catcher again. So it's important to know that the shadow catcher is a global setting. So once I decide that this object is going to be a shadow catcher, I can't reuse it for anything else anymore. So even if I go down here and I untick the shadow catcher to have my normal ground plane again, and then I move back to my shadow catcher, I see that the material is reapplied, so this is not going to work. So let's tick that shadow catcher and yeah, instead make a duplicate of our ground plane that I can then use. Now I just want to quickly show you how to export a position pass as well. Let's look at that ground plane quickly. Let me just hide the cube. And here on my ground plane, I already made a position pass, which is this fairly easy setup. Um, this is going to give you a normal blender position pass. Um, that hasn't been ever a problem for me. Um, it worked fine for me in Nuke. If you have any problems with it or your third party software doesn't pick it up, this is the most recommended um, node setup that you can use instead. So yeah, let me just reapply my normal material and unhide my cube. And let's go back to the view layers for a sec. So as you might have noticed, is I haven't actually made a duplicate of the main object because what we can do instead is go to the override tab here and we can override all materials in the scene. So um, this is a non-global setting, so this one will not affect the other view layers, which is really handy. So now we can go here and I can go to my position pass and apply it and it's done. So in this extras collection, we want to export all the passes that are needed for our compositing. So we're going to take that combined pass again. Our, com our um, position pass is actually going to end up in our combined pass. Then we also want to export the Z depth and the mist, the normal and the UVs. Um, I could take vector, but my cube is still and this one is for um, motion blur information. So I can just leave it unticked for now because my cube is not moving anyway. So now before we hit render, let's just quickly check that our um, file format is correct. I want to use the open EXR multi-layer and I want to set it to the color depth full float. We need the full float because um, we're going to export the crypto mats and they actually need um, that higher color depth. Also, we want to make sure that under post-processing, compositing and sequencer is ticked. So um, it's actually going to show up later in our compositing tab. And this is important because we need to export it there. So then um, let's quickly see how everything looks like. We have our beauty. This is just our beauty without our shadow. We have our shadow catcher, which is only the shadow and nothing else. That's correct as well. We have our extras with all the correct passes ticked. That's all fine. And our material over it. And in the crypto mats, there's nothing because we're not going to export this one for now. All right, cool. So we're ready to press surrender. All right, everything's rendered. Now we can switch to our compositing tab. Um, if you can't see this setup, you might have to take use nodes. So now we need three render layers. Let me just duplicate this quickly. All right, I'm going to set this one to beauty, this one to shadow catcher, and the last one to extras. Cool, now you see. Here are all the passes that we exported from the beauty, so like our diffuse and our gloss, and then also here um, the shadow catcher only with our image input, and here are all the other passes that we also choose, like normal and UV and mist. All right, so after we um, made our render layers, now we're gonna add a file output node. And first of all, on this file output node, um, I want to make sure that the file format is set to um, how I mentioned before that open EXR multi-layer. Otherwise, if you 
put all the inputs in and stuff and then change that later it's going to reset all the names of the inputs and that's really annoying so yeah let's make sure this is all correct and then um, we also want to choose the right path we want to export it to i'm actually going to export it onto my desktop and i've already created those folders let me just quickly jump here and um, yeah, here I've already created um, folders with the same names to just output those um, to make it all really clear. So now I'm going to actually input my uh, render pass beauty into that beauty group and call it beauty underscore. Um, it's going to put up, if you render an animation, it's going to put up uh, numbers at the end to make sure you have an underscore or anything to make it easier to read. Um, don't try to put .exr in here, even if it's suggested sometimes. Um, that is going to cause weird things like .exr, .exr, which will not be able to be picked up by Nuke properly. So make sure it's like beauty underscore and yeah, it's all fine then. And then because Nuke um, doesn't really know what blenders uh, image output exactly is, we need to rename it to RGBA. So it's going to get shuffled into the correct channel. And now let's just let me quickly duplicate that file output. And here now um, we can add all the inputs that we need. All right, now we're just going to um, hook them up. So image goes into RGBA, ambient occlusion into ambient occlusion, environment, diffuse direct and indirect, color, gloss direct, indirect and color. By the way, if you're interested in uh, what um, diffuse direct and indirect and color actually does uh, exactly, I'll put a link in the description below where it's explained quite well. All right, here RGBA is already correct, so image into RGBA, this is all we need for the shadow catcher. Here we're gonna add a few more inputs again. up all right now i'm just going to change those to the correct output here this one's going to go to my shadow catchers name is what shadow catcher and this one cool all right that's all we need to do and now we're gonna hit the render button again and render that all right and then if we jump back into our file explorer you can now see we have our beauty extras and shadow catcher all exported as EXR. All right, so before we jump into Nuke now, we want to export those crypto mats. And what's important to know is that we're not going to output them here in the file output node. We're actually going to render them from the top here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my um, layers and now it's time to go into my crypto mats collection. And I want to enable the beauty and the extras collection again. And now when I go to my view layers, I want to take that render single layer here. Um, so all the other view layers are not going to get rendered again, uh, anymore. And here under CryptoMat, I'm going to choose object and material. Um, asset is for parented objects. If you have an object with multiple little objects on it or something that are all parented to the bigger one, this would export um, those all together. Um, so we don't really have that, so let's leave that off. And um, now, instead of going to that file output node, we're actually going to define the output in here. 
so let's go back to the folder where we were in before and choose the crypto and and accept that for now and now we can render it straight away but as i said it must be from the up here otherwise it's not going to work Here we are the crypto mats and what's important is we go as the image and we also go save as because otherwise it's not going to save it. So now let's go to our folder. And here that's what I meant with the .exr, just ignore the .exr, type in crypto and save this image. Make sure it's all correct here and that's safe. All right, so let's jump into Nuke and here I've imported our beauty and the extras and the shadow catcher. Mind that like your shadow pass is in your alpha channel, so you need to press A to actually see it. And so if everything is correct, all those things should really appear in that RGBA channel. And um, if you want to see what else is in your file, you should plug in that layer contact sheet node so you can see. Here's our combined RGBA pass and all the rest that you can use for your compositing. So as there are many good compositing tutorials already on YouTube, I actually only want to show you how to use the crypto mats. So I've imported our crypto mat as well. So yeah, as you can see, when we plug in the viewer into our crypto mat node, we can't actually see anything. To actually see what's in your crypto mat uh, node, you need to download the uh, crypto mat plugin from Psyop. I put a link in the description below as well for you. So uh, when you download it, you need to actually paste it here in um, your users in your .nuke folder. And here you can see that. And then when you restart Nuke, you should get this little icon and it should start working. So now when we have the crypto mats, what we can do is we go and we type in crypto mat and we plug it in. And when we plug it in, we should get this. And now here in my crypto mat node, I can um, decide whether I want to edit the crypto materials or the crypto objects. I'm going to stick to crypto material for now. And now when I press picker add, I can press control and left click. And for example, select this material. I can also select multiple, multiple materials, but we're going to stick to that one only now. Now, if I want to edit this, I would take my beauty and I would, for example, create a grade node, plug it in. And then I can take my mask input and put it into my crypto mat node. So now when I grade, as you can see, we're only grading this small part. So that's really handy. And you can do, as I'm saying, the same thing with object. You can mask them out. Crypto mats are really, really handy. Okay, so that's all for now. Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful to someone. And if you have any questions or any of those steps didn't work for you, let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. All right, have a nice day.